About 20 years ago, a friend of mine was managing a restaurant in Pennsylvania, and a diner ordered a whole artichoke as a first course. Uh, it was served to him. About 20 minutes later, my friend walked by his table, and he saw on his plate nothing. There was, and he said, oh, yes, yes, it was a great artichoke. Uh, it was a little tough in some spots. Sir, if you're watching, if you're still alive, stay tuned. Alas, poor artichoke. <laughs> well, an artichoke, an artichoke is a dangerous thing. An artichoke is a, is a thistle. It's the unopened bud of a purple flower. And if you're not careful, thistle kill you. I mean, this thing has lots of, uh, lots of tough spots all over the place. Of course, it's got a lot of tenderness as well. We think of it tenderly. Uh, artichokes have always fascinated Western civilization. Uh, Henry VIII, for example, uh, fancied it as an aphrodisiac. Of course, Henry VIII thought everything was an aphrodisiac. <laughs> but um, I, I don't know why it has these, uh, these we, we think of it as having these qualities. Perhaps it has something to do with the fact that we disrobe an artichoke. We sort of dress it down to its, its sweet and, and nutty core. Um, now, it originally, uh, they think, came from North Africa, where it was called al kershof A-L-K-H-U-R-S-H-U-F in Arabic. Uh, and the English name is a corruption of that, coming through Italian, coming through uh, Old Spanish, where it was called al Alcorchofa. And it may have come from the Moors to the, to the Spaniards. That seems very likely. Um, Pliny, in Roman times, I and mean, this thing goes way back. In Roman times, Pliny, and I'm not sure if this was the elder or the younger or the middle aged, but Pliny seems to have been ashamed of the popularity of artichokes in Rome. There's always this sort of decadent thing connected to it. He called the vegetable a fashionable conceit. The, thus we turn into a corrupt feast, the earth's monstrosities, he said, those which even the animals instinctively avoid. So I, I, I worry when I'm eating an artichoke that perhaps I'm doing something that's just unnatural. But nobody else seems to have worried about that much. Uh, Catherine de Medici came from Italy to France in the 16th century, and she brought artichokes uh, to, into France for the first time. Now, a, uh, there's a cookbook author. His name was Pierre-Francois de La Varenne, and he published a cookbook in 1651, and for the first time codified all these changes in French cuisine. Uh, and these are all the things that, became, that dominated French cuisine for centuries. Uh, he began uh, his book with um, a recommendation that you don't use many spices. Um, in the Middle Ages, they used lots of heavy spices in France. He recommended stock-based sauces. He had many recipes for eggs. He posited truffles, had a kind word for truffles. And he had over 60 recipes for artichokes, which was kind of, shop kind of shocking. Um, in America, it doesn't go back quite that far. We don't go back quite that far. But Thomas Jefferson uh, brought the artichoke to America from Italy for the first time. It didn't catch on. It wasn't until the late 19th century when Italians living in California decided that Castroville was a perfect artichoke field and started to plant them in mass quantities. And today, uh, most of our artichokes come from there. I, w I still wouldn't say that it's like a major American vegetable. Uh, but it's growing. It's getting there. Uh, I'd like you to come along and join this trend. <laughs> I like artichokes a great deal. Uh, of course, when you're shopping for artichokes, it, it all starts with uh, you know, what you do at the market and whether you get good ones or you get bad ones. So let's take a look at a few different artichokes. Now, what, the first thing I want you to realize is that what, is, um, what I'm referring to as artichoke is actually what you would call the globe artichoke. It's got this big round globe on top. It's not Jerusalem artichoke, which is sometimes now is called sunchokes, but that's, that's a different vegetable entirely. That, the Jerusalem artichoke is the root of the sunflower plant, which in French is called girasol. And it's girasol through a strange linguistic connection that became Jerusalem artichoke. But this is what, this is what you want. You want the globe artichoke. Now, here's what you don't want. You don't want a globe artichoke in the market that has mold on it, quite clearly. Uh, you don't want one that has all these brown spots on it. There'll be some browning. Frost creates browning on the artichoke, and the artichoke growers say that that actually improves the flavor. I don't know whether they're telling the truth or not. But um, you don't want excessive browning on the artichoke. And also, you don't want the, the leaves to be open like this. You don't want them to be spreading. Look, this one has leaves 
spreading and sagging all over the place. And also, it has a very rubbery stem, which is another tip-off that it's quite old. I mean, look, you know, look at that. Don't, don't buy an artichoke like that. Do, however, buy an artichoke like this. Look at how compact uh, the globe is. Everything is clinging to the center. Um, there's very little browning on it. And the stem is very, very rigid. So, yeah, I would buy that one. I've almost never seen an artichoke that uh, doesn't have some brown spots. Rarely you do, but I, I don't worry about a few. But this is a good-looking artichoke, as is, as is this one. Nice and closed and compact. And very, very firm, rigid stem. Now, when um, you get it home and you eat it, there's a couple of things, just as long as we're talking about what's a good and bad artichoke, I want you to know that artichokes have a very subtle flavor. My father just doesn't understand artichokes. Why would anybody take the trouble to eat it? You know, he's in his 70s, and maybe he's lost a taste bud or two here or there. But I think it's a wonderful flavor. It's sort of like a, a wet herbal flavor. It seems to me, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody told me that an artichoke grew on the, the bottom of the sea, almost like a seaweed vegetable kind of flavor. It's, it's very hard to describe. But make sure it's fresh, because when it gets older, it loses that subtle flavor. Don't combine it with anything particularly full-flavored or spicy. It's in classical French cuisine, it's often combined with hollandaise sauce and mayonnaise and, and vinaigrettes, things without a lot of uh, strong flavor themselves to bring out the flavor of the artichoke. If you undercook it, it's going to be stringy and tough. If you overcook it, it's going to be mushy. So you have to catch just that window where it's perfectly uh, tender. Now, there are, uh, here's what you're likely to see in the world of artichokes. You're likely to see the whole hot cooked artichoke. And this one was just cooked, and it's still got some heat. Maybe I can release a little steam for you. Uh, very often, this is served with a hollandaise or that you dip it into, or you could pour a vinaigrette over it. In the Mediterranean cuisines, they like to stuff the artichoke with um, breadcrumbs that have been flavored with herbs and garlic and olive oil and perhaps braise it and then when you take these leaves out you get a, a mouthful of crumbs as well which is quite tasty. Um, another thing you could do with artichokes, I'm going to show you how to do this in a moment, is you can extract the artichoke bottoms. This is an extracted artichoke bottom and um, you can eat it just like that. You can top it with a vinaigrette or you can cut it up and toss it with butter and serve it as a vegetable. Or, as a very lovely kind of first course, you can stuff an artichoke bottom. This one has been stuffed with crab meat and uh, combined with some herbs and some shredded peppers and gratinade on top. This is, this is a yummy dish, I'm telling you. So anyway, there are all these possibilities. And if you come back with me in just a moment, I'm going to show you how to cook these various things. <laughs> I'm going to teach you a few things first about basic uh, artichoke management. <laughs> I, I suppose most people cook artichokes whole. So let's talk about that for a moment. I've got a bowl filled, uh, filled with uh, whole artichokes ready for cooking. Let me just show you how to do it. It's really very simple. And keep in mind that when you cut artichoke surfaces, you have to rub the surfaces with lemon. Otherwise, the artichokes will discolor. So for starters, you want to take off the stem. And uh, you, can, you can cut off the stem. That's good enough. Some people recommend that you actually sort of pull off the stem. Let's see how this works. And the reason they recommend that is because um, some fi Oh, very good. You see that stuff right there? There's fibers that come out of the stem that if you just cut them, those fibers would be left in. But you sort of pull those fibers out when you break off the stem. Of course, you very often get an uneven cut. So at that point, you do have to cut away to make an even base like that. And taking my own advice, I'm immediately rubbing with lemon juice. Um, now, the next thing you want to do is just cut about, let's say, three quarters of an inch off the top of the artichoke, just so you can start to see the nice opening of leaves inside there, cut with lemon juice. Uh, and then, lastly, uh, there might be some very pointy leaves left. And that becomes a problem, both for the, the cook and for the diners, um, if they, you know, because they're sharp, they really can stick you. That's why I have no idea how my friend in Pennsylvania at that restaurant survived his ordeal. But uh, these are very sharp and pointy and quite firm. So as you can see here, and here's a very nicely done one, everything is cut away so that nobody's going to get hurt. You want to enjoy this stuff. You don't want to get hurt. Um, I've cut with, uh, with lemon. And um, I mean, you know, it couldn't be easier to cook a whole artichoke. You take a big pot of boiling water. For this many artichokes, I'd like you to have a good seven or eight quarts of water. And a couple of 
tablespoons of salt. Uh, as we said, artichoke is subtle, and salt helps to bring out the flavor. And then you just um, drop them in the water. And some people like to take a towel and put it over the top of the artichokes in the water to keep them completely moist and covered with water. I have found from my own, from my own experience that um, it's really like, um, you know, it's like steaming. I mean, it, it, it doesn't, shouldn't put the lid on because it'll, it'll make the color kind of ghastly. But um, there's plenty of steam around in here to keep them moist. And what I like to do is just sort of turn them every once in a while like that. Bottoms up, bottoms down, so on. It's, it's a no-brainer. Uh, you know, you cook it for, uh, at, at about half an hour, I start to test it. I start to poke my knife in the bottom here to see if it's getting tender. I pull off a leaf, see if the leaf is tender. And that's it. Then it's done, and then you're in whole artichoke city, and you're ready to, uh, to sauce it and serve it any way that you like. Um, another way to go, of course, is to do the artichoke bottom. And uh, this is a little bit more elegant, a little bit more interesting. Takes a little bit more skill, but let me show you what it's all about. Now, first of all, let's make a distinction between the bottom and the heart. People often talk about artichoke hearts. You know how you see artichoke hearts in the jar, the marinated artichoke hearts in the jar? It's not just the bottom. It's also some leaves that are still attached to the bottom. That's called the heart when you've got the leaves on it. But when you take the leaves off completely, you've got uh, what's called the artichoke bottom. Um, so you start the same way and cut off the same way, like that. But at this, what you do here is basically you remove all of these outer leaves. And you can save them, actually. They're sort of nice if you throw them into a soup or something like that. Not to eat it, you're going to flavor a stock. Um, OK. They add a nice herbal flavor to any sort of soup stock that you're making. Now, you see what happens down here? There's a spot where you start to see an indent. That's what you're looking for. When you've pulled off enough leaves to see that indent, cut it right above that indent. Rub, 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 dub, dub. And then you want to take a little knife and you want to get this nice and even. You see I've got here all this green stuff around here. <clears throat> so I want to cut away that green stuff till I get nice white stuff. And then I have a perfectly shaped artichoke bottom, sort of cut it at the bottom here to make it even so that it'll sit nicely when it's cooked, like that. <clears throat> and I've still got what's called the choke inside here. I'm not going to cook that part yet. I'm going to put this in a bowl of acidulated... I'm not going to take out the choke yet. I'm going to put the uh, artichoke bottom in a bowl of acidulated water, which is, just means water with lemon juice or vinegar in it. And we let that sit for a little while. Now, here's the really interesting thing. When you make um, artichoke hearts, you make them in something that's called a blanc. This is classic French uh, technique. Because the blanc, which means white, keeps the artichoke hearts white the artichoke bottoms white. Now, to make this blanc, it's really very simple. You take a quarter cup of flour and you put it in a large pot. I've got a whisk here. I've got cold water here. I've got like a quart of cold water. You beat in a little bit first to make a paste. You know, the only trick here is just making sure that the flour is not too lumpy. And even if it is somewhat lumpy, it's not that big of a deal because you're not really going to eat this. You're not making a sauce. You're just making a cooking medium. Okay, so I beat in enough water here to, and you sort of want to do it slowly. If you beat in a lot of water, you'd, it'd be very hard to get the lumps out. But you beat in just a little bit of water, it sort of makes this nice, you know, sort of grayish paste. I've got almost all the lumps out of it now. And then, at that point, you can add all of the water. Okay. Now, after you've added all the water, you want to add some lemon juice, about an eighth of a cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice, and half a teaspoon of salt. And what you've got here is something that's called a blanc. Then, you need to take your blanc and you put it on the stove, and um, you bring it to a boil. Um, my oven's not going on. Well, here's, here's what you would do, hypothetically. You bring it to a boil, um, and you let it, um, uh, once it comes to the boil, you turn the heat down. You let it simmer for about five minutes. Then it's all cooked in. Then what you want to do at that stage is take your artichoke bottoms out of the bowl, out of the acidulated water. You put them in the simmering blanc, just like that. And you cook them for about, um, 
30 minutes or so, I start to check at 20 minutes. Um, and once again, it's piercing the bottoms to see if they're tender, just tender, just yields to the knife. And uh, that's basically how you know. I like it a little bit more on the, on the cook side. You know, I don't like it to go mushy at all. So it, you know, again, that's a very simple thing to do. Now, you remember I told you before, you can take your, your artichoke bottom at that point and you can stuff it and you can do various things like that. There's one thing that I love to do with it. Uh, it's a salad that I developed that is called a warm artichoke salad with uh, bacon and mustard vinaigrette. These guys, are, they're still in their Blanc cooking water. They're finished cooking. And I like to keep them in the Blanc cooking water. There's a kind of like gummy texture that clings to them, which I find actually rather attractive. Um, of course, when they come out, whoops, <laughs> when they, <clears throat> see that move? It takes a lot of practice to be able to do that. When they come uh, out of the Blanc, um, they have, actually, I'm going to have to retrieve my spoon. Excuse me for a second. When they come out of the Blanc, they still have the choke in them. Now, here's where the choke is. It's very interesting. You see it here? It's got like, first of all, I have these little purple leaves that are also kind of tough, and you don't want to eat those because they have little sharp ends. And then you have to scrape away from the side here. Aha! Can you see what's happening right there? There's that furry stuff in the center. Um, and then there's that, that sort of gray or greener wall around there. Sometimes you can do it with a knife. Sometimes you can do it with your fingers. But basically, this choke part, this furry, uh, this hairy part, is not very attractive to eat. So you want to either, you know, using a combination of your fingers and perhaps a knife and perhaps a spoon, you want to uh, get it out. Ah, there we go. It's coming away nicely. It, it sort of, you get big clumps of the stuff that just sort of come out. I'll clean this up for you. And there it is. You have a nice artichoke bottom that's ready for stuffing or anything that you want anything that you want to do with it. Now I'm putting it right here in this blanc and watch this. I'm going to spill the artichokes out of the blanc. Get all that blanc stuff off. And then it's just a question of slicing them. Move this over so you can see. Now I have um, eight artichoke hearts there. I'm going to make slices like this. Actually, I'm not going to do the entire recipe for you, but you can see basically what's happening here. You take your, um, your, and they should still be warm. That's the nice part of it. They're still warm, and they're a little bit gummy from the Blanc. You take them, you put them in a bowl. You make a mustardy vinaigrette that has a little bit of garlic in it, as I've done right here. And sometimes I cheat a little bit, and I add just a little bit of that Blanc. I know it's got a little flour in it, but it also has lemon juice, and it sort of breaks the, uh, you know, if you've got a sort of thickened vinaigrette from the mustard, it sort of makes it a little lighter and more delicate. And then you want warm pieces of bacon, which you mix with this. And don't cook them too far. Just cook them to where they're still kind of soft. You don't want them really crunchy. And then some chopped parsley, like this. Oh, man, this is really a terrific salad. I've made this many a time and delighted many a diner. And you sort of pile it on a plate. You could put it on a little bed of nice lettuce or mosh or something like that, if you desire. And maybe top with a little bit more parsley. I'll clean that up for you. It's really, it's a terrific first course. And nobody has to deal with the hairy choke or the scary parts of the artichoke. And nobody has to die in a restaurant. <laughs> if you come back in just a moment, I'll show you, though, how to deal with the whole artichoke at table. I love the uh, artichoke salad that I just showed you, especially where you can keep all the elements warm. But when I really want to get down with an artichoke, when I really want to have an artichoke experience, I like it like this. Just whole on a plate. This is a special artichoke plate that has a little spot for sauce over here, and you can put the leaves around here. Let me show you. This is a cold artichoke. I have a vinaigrette there. You could put a mayonnaise, but I'm going to take a leaf off. And you see that meat that's at the bottom of the leaf? That's what you want. You want to dip a little bit in the sauce and... Mm. Scrape it. Scrape it through your teeth. This part over here, that's too hard. You don't want to eat that. But it's just the bottom of the leaf right there that's all tender and lovely. And it's absolutely delicious. Now, people often say you shouldn't drink wine with artichokes. I think that's wrong. The reason they say you shouldn't drink wine 
It's because artichokes has a chemical that makes everything you taste after you've had the artichoke taste sweeter. Serve a really dry wine like a Provencal Rosé, like Tavel, and you've got it. So I'll see you next time. Remember, life is a matter of taste. Golden Delicious is a different apple. Making hummus next.